what does the equity principle tells us equity principle tells us that all the organizational employees should be considered equal fourth nature of management is it is mainly behavioral so why we call it is mainly behavioral because it is related to the human behavior so whatever is the demand of the situation we can modify the principles Hello everyone. I am Purnima, lecturer in the Department of Commerce, Vidyashram Pre University College, Temple of Excellence. In this session, we will be discussing about the principles of management. What are the various principles of management? In this session, we will be discussing about the concept of management the nature and principles of management significance of the principles of management then we also said taylor's scientific management principles of scientific management techniques of scientific management fayol's principles of management comparison between fayol versus taylor so in this chapter 2 we will be having a discussion on all these topics now in this session we will be just discussing about the first two concepts here that is the concept of principles and nature of management and then we have the actual nature and principles of management okay now so what do you mean by management we all know so in my previous sessions we have already discussed the various meanings of the word management now we look into the principles of management now as a concept so we will be studying the principles so a managerial principle is a broad and general guideline it is a broad and general guideline for decision making and behavior so by the term principle we mean that it lays down the broad guidelines based on which we can take a decision or for decision making and behavior then next is principles are basic truths or guidelines for behavior how a person should behave or what are the various rules of behavior so all these things we will be studying in this uh, based on the principles of management then next we have to differentiate between principles and values now what are values now values are general rules for behavior of individuals in a society formed through common practice now if by the meaning of the word value we mean that there are general rules for behavior of individuals now how the individual should behave for example when you are riding a scooter or a four wheeler whatever it is so you have to follow the traffic rules so the rules have been laid down by the uh, people who are controlling the traffic and so based on those rules you will have to just ride your scooter or the car whatever it is the same way these values are general rules for behavior so man is a social being so when he lives in a society he has to follow the code and conduct of the society so whatever is good or whatever is the followed norms and they have to be followed or norms of behavior have to be followed so all those things we call it as values then next is the values are general rules for behavior of individuals in a society then how they are formed they are formed through common practice so common practice means so that which is practiced by every person in the society they are general rules for behavior of individuals formed through common practice so it is formed through common practice so whatever is the uh, general rules of behavior so it is commonly practiced by all the individuals then principles are formed after research now coming to the management principles they are formed after lot of research in work situations which are technical in nature so whatever is the work or whatever is the guidelines to be followed in the principles of management they have been formulated after doing lot of observations and research in the work situations then values and principles should go hand in hand to fulfill the social and 
ethical responsibilities of the society. So whenever you follow any principle, it should go hand in hand with the values also. Only then it, it can be effective. Now, next we go look into the nature and principles of management. What is the nature of management? Uh, that is the principles of management. Now, if you just look into this, we can see that principles are general propositions. So, general propositions means they just tell you can follow this way or they just are the guidelines or they just show the way in, the, in which the managers have to walk or they are applicable under certain conditions. So, when you are riding a uh, car, if uh, you have to follow the instructions or the arrow marks, whatever is given or the, you have to follow the directions on the way. The same way, these principles of management, they are the guiding lines or they, have, they are the directions uh, which the manager has to follow. And the derivation of principles can be called as a science. How these principles have been derived, we can call it as a science because it, it has been laid down to us after so much of experimentation and observation and application of this principle is called as an art. Now why we call it as an art? Because it has to be applied depending on the various situations. On, under what situation he has to apply, now what principle that is to be decided by the management. So we call that the application is an art. Then management principles are very popular because of increasing professionalism. So now we see that we have professionals in almost all the fields and these professionals need guidelines. So management principles are very popular because of increasing professionalism and they denote cause and effect relationships. So, management principles tell us what is the cause for the situation and what will be the effect of that situation and functions of management are performed for the day-to-day -day running of the business. So, when you discuss about or when you just think about what is the nature of principles of management, we can understand that these principles are generally general propositions or they are the general guidelines which are applicable under certain situations and these principles are a result of research and experimentation and observation and they are very very popular today because of increasing professionalism and they are most important because the management is necessary for the day-to-day -day running of the business. Now, coming into the nature and principles of management. So, we can understand the nature and principles of management under these five points. Now, what are these five points? First one is universal applicability. Second one is general guidelines. Third one is formed by principles and experimentation. Fourth one is mainly behavioral. Fifth one, cause and effect relationships. Fifth one, contingent. Now, coming to the first one, that is universal applicability. So, when you mean by universe, it represents the whole world. If you can see this picture, the whole picture is uh, there is a globe here and we have, they have mentioned success, success, success. Now, the whole world, this management principles, they are applicable throughout the world. It can be applied in all types of organizations. Now, whether it is a government organization or a private organization, these management principles can be applied. Whether it is a multinational company or whether it is a very small company, we can apply the rules of management. Then, whether it is the manufacturing or the service sector. So, whether you are having a production department or whether it, you are running a transportation services. So, any depending on the any type of transportation. So, any type of uh, business it may be engaging in. So, these management principles are applicable. Whether it is a 
profit making organization or a non profit making organization so whether it is profit oriented or an a service oriented organization these uh, management principles will apply in any type of organization that is why we say that these principles of management have universal applicability so universal applicability means they can be applicable in all over the world in all types of institutions whether it is huge or small government or private manufacturing or service profit oriented or non profit oriented organizations then second one is the general rules what are the general guidelines so these management principles they offer us the general guidelines which the professionals have to follow they do not provide exact solutions so they don't give us the exact solutions to any problem but they help in dealing with the situations so they have have to confront too many situations in the day to day running of the business and these management principles help us in dealing with the situations for example conflict between two departments now what do you mean by conflict between two departments as i told you earlier in any organization there will be various departments so these management principles are the general guidelines so they help us in resolving the conflicts resolving what do you mean by resolving so then if there is uh, if there are two departments in an organization which are always fighting with each other or if there is a conflict of interest between two departments so it is the duty of the manager to resolve the conflict now how does he resolve the conflict he can resolve the conflict keeping in mind the uh, keeping in mind the organizational goals so what are the organizational goals he has to keep that in mind and then he has to resolve the conflict so they are the general guidelines the principles of management they are the general guidelines they offer us directions for resolving any conflict in the organization next the third feature of management is it is formed by practice and experimentation so if we can look at the picture here we have this experiment conclusion analysis review design define wonder so uh, if there is any situation in the organization then we have to just define the problem what is the problem then we have to have a review then we have to design analyze experiment and lastly the conclusion so these management principles are formed by practice and experimentation so we need to have proper practice only after practicing these principles they have just given us the guidelines of management so they are formed by practice and experimentation yes experimentation means they have carried out the experiments various experiments and then they have come to the conclusion that these management principles are working and they can be adopted by any organization that is how they have come experience and collective wisdom so managers who have been in this they have been who have been managing the organizations for a very long time they have their experience and their collective wisdom so they have put forth because of their uh, intellectual um, nature they have just come up with this principles of management how they have come up after careful experimentation and observation so after careful experimentation and observation they have come up with this principles now for example take the example of equity principle so what does the equity principle tells us equity principle tells us that all the organizational employees should be considered equal they should not be any divisions based on race caste creed or religion so this equity principle 
we should hold good so they that is why they have told us that equity principle is an important principle of management the next comes the discipline now if there is no discipline in the employees of the organization it is very difficult to run the organization so we need to have discipline or the various rules of conduct for all the employees so discipline is essential so after these have they have come to this a conclusion that we need to have this equity principle and discipline principle only after experimentation and observation so these principles are formed by practice and experimentation next fourth nature of management is it is mainly behavioral so why we call it is mainly behavioral because it is related to the human behavior if you can see here the human behavior here we have the behavior here we have the design the change the habits so everything goes on in the human mind how a person behaves in an organization it all depends on what is going on in his mind so these principles aim at influencing human behavior so influencing human behavior means how a person should behave in the organization so we also decide at what time he has to come to the organization what what dress he has to wear what is the code of conduct where he has to sit where he has to work so everything has been laid down so these principles aim at influencing human behavior then it helps in better understanding of relationship so what is this better understanding of relationship so we should know that when we have an organization we create the superior subordinate relationships also so who has to report to whom and who has to give the instructions and others everything so authority responsibility relationships are created in an organization so these principles they aim at influencing human behavior and also helps in better understanding of relationship between human and material resources so human and material resources so we should make use of the best human resource and also the best material resource so it helps us to have a guideline for the best and efficient and effective use of human and material resources then next one fifth one is cause and effect relationship so this cause and effect relationship we would most of us would have understood in our scientific principles so we all know that two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen when it is combined together it gives us water now the principles helps in establishing cause and effect relationships in certain situations now as i told you earlier these principles are based on uh, experimentation and observation so they have just observed certain situations and what is the outcome of that situation and based on that these principles have been formulated so they help in establishing cause and effect relationships in certain situations so when that such situations occur the manager is in a better position to handle such situations then they mainly apply to human behavior so almost all the management principles they apply to human behavior that is these principles influence the human beings so that is why these principles apply to the human behavior exclusively then they help in assisting the managers in establishing these relationships the so the cause and effect relationships they help in assisting the managers so the managers will know what is the best way to deal with each situation and he should be in a better position to handle such situations then the ne la next one is contingent so these principles are contingent in nature so if you can see the diagram here we have the rain uh, fall and we have the umbrella so this umbrella is given to protect ourselves from the rain or these uh, this umbrella is open only when there is rainfall okay so we if you can correlate it with the principles of management the principles are dependent on the 
prevailing situation at a particular point of time. So, prevailing situation at a particular point of time means, so this uh, acts like an umbrella. So, whatever are the principles of management, they act like an umbrella so that they can help us in uh, dealing with the rainfall. So, in the same way, these principles are dependent on the prevailing situations. So, whatever is the situation at that point of time, so if you can use these principles as an umbrella, so you will be able to save yourself from the situations or the manager will be able to find a solution. Now, what is the main of uh, aim of opening an umbrella? To see that you don't get wet in the rainfall. The same way in the in any particular situation. So, if there is any situation where the manager has to deal, has to come out with a solution. So, these principles will help him to come up with the solution. Then, for example, fair and just remuneration. Now, what do you mean by fair and just remuneration? So, whatever is the remuneration given to employees, so it should be fair and just. So, based on his quali uh, qualification, based on his experience and based on the organizational resources also and based on the salary prevailing in the uh, business environment, Based on all these factors, the uh, remuneration of a particular employee will be decided in, in any organization. So, it should be fair and just determined by number of factors. Now, what are the various factors? First one is the qualification. So, the person's qualification will decide what is his remuneration. Second one is his experience. What is his experience? Then third one is what is the uh, strength of the organization? Then fourth one is what is the prevailing uh, salary? Prevailing uh, salary for the particular position. So, all these factors will decide the remuneration of an employee. So, depending on all these factors, we can decide the remuneration of an employee. So, these management principles are contingent. Yes, we say that fair and just, but then again, this fair and just depends on all these factors. Then, last one is flexible. So, if you can see here, he is the a person who has to decide so whether he should go in this uh, direction or this this di uh, left or right or straight. So, he has to decide. So, the management principles are not very rigid. So, they are flexible. So, they are flexible. Why we call them flexible? Because they are all dependent on human behavior and human behavior as you all know is very very unpredictable. So, they are these management principles are not very rigid and they are flexible. So, based on the situation. So, they can be more modified as per the situation. So, whatever is the demand of the situation, we can modify the principles. Now, for example, you take the example of centralization. Now, what is the meaning of the word centralization? Centralization means uh, you have decision making power. Decision making power is with the top management. So, the centralization. By centralization, we mean that most of the decisions are taken by the top management and they have to be implemented in the lowest levels of management. Now, this centralization principle, it uh, depends on the nature of the organization. So, in this centralization principle, where you should apply, what type of organization you should apply. So, all this will be dependent on the different types of organizations. The same way the decentralization. So, decentralization is the opposite of centralization and decentralization uh, means there is a 
transfer of authority. So, the decision making authority can be given to the middle level and the lowest levels of organization. So, this decentralization principle, uh, it, will, uh, it will be decided by the, again by the nature of the organization. So, these are the various uh, uh, features of the principles of management. So, I hope you have all understood the nature of the principles of management. Thank you everybody.